So here's the nice shiny bit of aluminium uh, ready to be worked upon. So you can see there the little divots of where I've marked on uh, holes that need to be cut. So these ones in the middle here are going to be the equivalent of this, which is to allow um, the shaft of the motor to, to poke through. Um, and then these ones here are so that I can drill the kind of beginning holes of these slots, um, which will allow for these um, the cap screws that go through there to to pass through um, and then the slot will, uh, will allow that movement um, for adjustment and tension um, and then these ones are so that this then can be mounted onto this plate down here so this has got the holes already drilled and tapped into the back of it and that plate will stick out of here um, and then there'll be a belt that runs between there this screw around these little tensioner pulleys here and then onto the other screw, which you can just see on the other side over there. And that will look eventually like this. So those are those little tensioner pulleys there. And then there's the motor um, sat on its little mount. So we're going to make this mount. So it's 20 mil aluminium plate, um, super flat. Um, doesn't particularly need to be super flat for this. It certainly won't be by the time I've finished hand routing it. When it comes to buying tools you get what you pay for um, but one thing I definitely recommend spending a couple of extra quid on is a decent centre punch. I bought some rubbish ones off eBay, they go blunt really quick um, and they're not actually any use at making a hole that's in the centre. So I bought this one which is uh, a Sterrett one and it's been brilliant not that much more expensive than the cheap ones on eBay and it's definitely worth the extra money and that is what I've used here to to punch these which will give me a, um, a nice starter and make sure the drill doesn't go off track another tool I highly recommend is these little tiny dormer spot drills center drills incredibly useful and not expensive So there we have it, all centre drilled and ready for the next stage. I'm now going to just mark on what size each of these holes needs to be so I don't make any mistakes. So each one of these ones needs to be 9mm. Each one of these 6.5. And these ones in the middle 13. A little bit of cutting fluid. distracting this filming business. I've really drilled into the base of my drill press. And you can get really complex X, Y arrangements where you can clamp everything down and make sure you get everything kind of bang on. And I've seen people on YouTube sort of running the drill in reverse whilst holding it down to kind of line everything up. To be honest, what I found is that if, if you've gone to the trouble of centre drilling that hole and you've got a decent drill bit, it'll find the centre of the hole pretty easily. And it just moves itself into the centre.
I also got pretty hung up on drill speeds um, initially as well. However, again, this is a limited machine. Um, now that I can show inside here, there's only there's only so many options in terms of uh, how you can gear my fairly cheap pillar drill. Um, so I have it permanently on the slowest speed, and I find that does the job pretty well. It gets a little bit hairy with some of the bigger drill bits, but it gets the job done. So this drill press will take up to a 16 mil uh, drill bit. However, a 13 mil bit is the biggest I've ever run on it. And to be honest, drilling metal, even at the slowest speed, this is as big as I'd want to go. So here we go, 13 mil holes. Key is to just watch it as it comes out the other side because it can sometimes um, catch. Uh, one of the dangers is that it catches this and spins it around and obviously there's some sharp edges on there. But for little parts like this, certainly I've never had any trouble uh, hanging on to it. Famous last words I suppose. Now for the second of the big holes. As you can see, I've run into a bit of trouble here. The drill, the holes were just too close together, so the drills actually started to wander off course and into the second hole. I think if I drilled a hole through with a smaller drill bit first, it probably would have been okay because it's it, it was all right while it was still in the the centre drill hole, and then as soon as it's come out of that, it's it's wandered off. Doesn't matter particularly because I'm going to be routing all of this lot out anyway. Um, it just means there's going to be a bit more work to to open this this hole up um, later on, but never mind. <laughs> 